So hello everybody and welcome to another Power BI tutorial. In today's video I'm going to show you how you can combine Power BI and Excel to do financial reporting in a way that works both for IT and for finance uh, professionals, okay? So let's get started. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have this data set that I found at some website on Microsoft and it has just simple tables. It has a finance table that contains, you know, the actual budgets and forecasts for finance account. And then I have an account table where you have, you know, all the accounts and then you have a calendar. So you can easily with these accounts create a matrix that looks like a, a profit and loss, but it's not really a profit and loss. You know, profit and loss look at specific, have a specific look. There are reasons for that. And finance professionals want to have it that way. If you want to recreate that in Power BI, things get very muddy, very, very easy. So one of the things is you will have the totals at the bottom. It is possible to do, but it gets very ugly with the standard matrix. If you want to have, for example, net revenue, which would be the sum of these two, and net profit, which is would be this minus these, you have to do that. It is not impossible, but it's not very easy. So it gets difficult for anybody at finance to be able to work with if they do not know DAX. There are custom visuals, but the custom visuals have limitations because Microsoft has set those limitations. I think that is not a vendor issue, it's more like security issue at Microsoft side, you're not allowed to do X and Y. One of the things that you would notice is if that there are custom visuals that do a beautiful job creating all these like subtotals, but if you export them to Excel, they will not export, for example. And you cannot use the measures and there's like a lot of buts and ifs that doesn't doesn't make them like the perfect solution either. So how do we combine the, the world of Power BI with the world of Excel to actually make everybody happy? Let me show you. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a Power BI model that it will look like this. So it will have all the accounts, it will have the actuals and the budgets and the forecasts in a simple matrix, right? Once you have that, you're going to publish it to the service. So anyone at finance or whoever else needs it will actually have access to this. So we're going to go to... Uh, no, I don't want to put that. So we're going to publish it to the service. And then once we have it there, you guessed it, we are actually going to export it to Excel. And I'm going to show you how you can easily create a profit and loss that is still connected to the model that works beautifully. So let me show you. We go to Power BI. And here we have our model. So the beauty of using Power BI instead of exporting directly to Excel is that you can actually have your IT department or whatever just create your model for you and then publish it to the service and anyone can connect to it. If you do it in Excel, you know what Excel is like a one-man show. So this time it will allow you to share it with everybody. Everybody will see the same information and it will, you can schedule updated, right? So you can see the benefits already from that. And then you can subscribe to it and all the beautiful things that the Power BI service offers. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, what is the analyze in Excel? I always, they move them around all the time. So here, export analyze in Excel. So you want to save the file that gets downloaded into either OneDrive or SharePoint so they stay connected. That means that when you refresh the Power BI file, the Excel file will refresh too when you open it, okay? So that is an important thing. Enable all this stuff to allow to connect to the model on the service. And then you need to create the basics of, or the skeleton again of the um, uh, profit and loss. So let's build the pivot table. You have a class, subclass, and then you're going to put the actual, the budget and the forecast. Remember that you need to create measures for those in order to appear as a measure in here. Okay, that's the export, export to Excel. And now we need to format this in a way that it, it will look like a profit and loss. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to 
get rid of those fields and you can actually get rid of the plus and minus buttons or not. It depends on what flexibility you want to give them. I would get rid of them because then we're going to do other things and it will probably not work as intended. The next thing that you want to do is you want to move these at the bottom. So that is very easily done in, uh, in Excel move to the bottom you see that now they are here down here which is really nice and then you want to give a little bit of space if you look at a profit and loss normally they have like a lot of blanks in between and it's just so you are able to visualize it and see the data easier it gets otherwise quite muddy so i'm going to insert black rows after each group the next thing that we're going to do is hide the stuff that we don't want so that I don't want anymore, that I don't want anymore. So we hide it. I'm going to hide that too. Right, the grand total I don't want. Now, how do we add the net revenue, net profit, blah, 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 you know, the subtotals that we talked about. Here's the thing. Normally, in a pivot table, you can actually go to pivot table analyze and then you can add property fields but because this is a connected model it doesn't allow you to do that so in order to be able to do any further transformation into the pivot table you need to convert it to formulas okay and then the pivot table functionality will go away but it will you see it will keep the connection to the model you can see it here so you're still connected, everything is good, it's just that you don't have a pivot table anymore. And now, the beauty of this is that you can actually start doing things the Excel way, right? So you're going to have here net revenue. And that would be these plus these. And then you can format them so they look pretty. There you go, right? And then you can do here net profit. And that will be this one. Excuse the data, as I said, I just downloaded it. So it is what it is, right? And then you can just put it in there and make it a little bit bigger. And that's the way you do it. Then now you can color it anywhere you like so you can get all the totals and subtotals and come on where is the black and it's starting to look like a penal table now this is a table that your finance team can actually work with and when it is still connected so if you refresh it will refresh so it will refresh everything it will refresh the files from uh, power the fields from Power BI and then the ones that you have in Excel. It works like a charm. It does work. It is very, very useful. So to wrap this up, we are actually going to connect this Power BI file back to the service so you get everything in one place, okay? So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you because it, it has a little trick. Um, go back to Power BI, to the workspace where you have this thing. Go update up. And then go to the navigation. I just selected the PNL, the Power BI file, and the Excel. This is how you do it. You go to, you click Excel. This is the title that you will see on the navigation. The link, you cannot just copy this link. You have to go to File and Embed and copy the embed link. Just the thing that is, is after the SRC, the source. So you have to copy only that part. I put it into one note and then I just grab the, the part I need or notepad. Maybe you have a better trick. And that is the link that you copy. Otherwise it will not open the way I want it to open, which is, I'll show you. I want it to open within the app. You can have it open in Excel, but I think it's a lot neater to open it within the app. So you just click yes. And there you have it. And now you can format it the Power BI to be Power BI like if you want, so it doesn't, you know, deviate too much. And there you have it, a perfect solution. Excel and Power BI working together. So give it a go. Again, why do it this way? You get the Power BI 
service capabilities, subscribe, share, schedule refresh, governance, all that type of stuff, certified data sets, all that good stuff. But then for professionals in finance world or other places or other functions where they might not know a lot of DAX and they still want to fiddle with the data, Excel is the world for them, right? They probably know Excel, they will be confident with it. So the only thing that they have to do is, you know, you, you have to obviously give them a little bit of education or block some of the uh, some of these fields so they don't get overwritten and the rest they can just do whatever they need and everybody is happy and everything refreshes. Okay, so this is over today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know how you do PLs. If you have all the tricks, I will be interested to know. And I will see you again on the next video on Thursday. Until then, take care. Bye bye.